What's happening, everybody? Greg Ehrenberg here from Stochastic.com. We're about to break down week four of the NFL season, looking at the main slate for FanDuel. I also have a video breaking down the DraftKings slate that is up on the YouTube channel. So if you guys are only looking for FanDuel, you can watch this video. If you're looking for DraftKings, check out the other video. Even better, if you're looking for both, watch both videos. As you come in, like the video, subscribe to the YouTube channel. If you want access to all the tools and data that I'm using to break down this slate, link below in the description box. You sign up for a football package, you get access to everything. Everything is included. Build your lineups on our site, simulate them on our site, and win money with us as well. So everything included that you need to win money playing uh, DFS football, it's in our fantasy football NFL package right down below. Now, if we look at the lineups that I've built here for FanDuel, first thing I'm going to do is favor the top 150, sorted by simulated ROI. And then we'll look at uh, some of the player exposures and also some of these lineups here. And... We've got a few lineups here that are projected towards the top and good mix of quarterbacks too. It doesn't look like there's like a real focus in my top projected lineups. It's not like there's one team that's coming out way more exposed than other ones in terms of my top lineups. Number one overall lineup, it's a Chargers double stack with a run back as well. So Justin Herbert is the quarterback. The pass catchers are Keenan Allen and Quinton Johnston as far as his pass catchers. And then also we have James Cook, Miles Sanders, and then uh, Devontae Adams, Pat Fryermuth, Javante Williams, and then the Broncos defense filling out the rest of the lineup. Second best lineup here is a Rams triple stack, Cowboys triple stack, which one thing that I have definitely noticed using our sims and data and tools this year, in general, the optimal strategy in large field tournaments, you want to be stacking multiple pass catches with your quarterback to optimize your chance of winning some of these large field tournaments. Also, the big tournament on FanDuel is paying out a little bit less top-heavy this weekend. So it is right around 20% of the prize pool paying out to first place. That's why I simulated the contest with the 20% to first payout, whereas when I'm looking at DraftKings this weekend, more top-heavy. So allocating that a little bit differently and going to 30% to first when I'm building out lineups for DK. But let's go and look at the individual player exposures. And yeah, really condensed at the top. We have Miles Sanders and Javante Williams as the two most rostered players by a mile. They're both expected to be popular this week. 22% ownership projected going to Miles Sanders, 24% for Javante Williams. And we're getting to way more of that than the field. So uh, Miles Sanders, Javante Williams looking like a good piece of chalk for us on FanDuel. And then as far as wide receivers go, paying up for Devontae Adams a lot. And then also Puka Nakua, who is like upper mid-range pricing on FanDuel is where I would consider him. So different Different price category than Devontae Adams, but getting to a bunch of him as well. So uh, all three of our three most rostered players are popular. It's funny because I already built out some DraftKings lineups for this weekend. Uh, my DK lineups are looking super contrarian for this weekend. And then FanDuel looks like the chalk looks a little more justified. Uh, and then as far as running backs also here, rounding out with Tony Pollard and James Cook. So if you look at the running back exposures, not going to really be getting to a lot of running backs unless something changes outside of Miles Sanders, Javante Williams, Tony Pollard, James Cook, really condensed RB exposure for me here. And then uh, getting to a good amount of the Eagles defense, they are in 32% of lineups, tight end exposure. We have Tyler Higby, Pat Fryermuth popping up the most. And I really do like the Pittsburgh Steelers passing game this weekend. Deontay Johnson remains out for this team. He's on the injured list. And we just haven't seen much of a pricing change across any site as far as the Steelers' pass catchers are concerned. It's been a pass-heavy team this year. So I do like that we're getting to a good amount of Pat Fryermuth. And there's other wide receivers from the Steelers as well that make a good amount of sense just outside of Fryermuth at tight end. Uh, like Players like Calvin Austin, I think, is a good dart throw this weekend. I also really like getting to George Pickens. So uh, Steelers' pass catching game, definitely something I'm going to be uh, targeting this weekend. Quarterback exposure looks like we're pretty spread out here, but let's look at QB and see what we're getting to. Yeah, so most exposed quarterback is Matthew Stafford at 18%, but really spread out. 13% Josh Allen, 11% Kenny Pickett, 10% Anthony Richardson, 6% Justin Fields, and I assume a lot of those lineups, if, if I have any lineups this weekend, they're going to be a quarterback without a pass catcher. They're most apt to be Justin Fields lineups. So pretty spread out here at quarterback. Who are we underweight to for the weekend? Underweight to Kyron Williams. 
So Williams, that is one piece of chalk that we're coming in underweight to the field to on FanDuel. We're just getting uh, some of the other chalky running backs more. Same with Christian McCaffrey, Alexander Masson. Stands is no surprise here. The running back exposure I have is so condensed that pretty much any other running back here, fairly underweight to the field on. So coming in underweight to the field on all of these guys right now. Underweight to field on Jalen Hurts as a quarterback option, which also correlate here. Underweight to Dallas Goddard. Underweight to, G- to A.J. Brown. So uh, other passing games that I'm targeting. And in general, uh, looking at cheaper quarterbacks this weekend, which is a different from the first few weeks of the year. Not getting as much of the guys like Patrick Mahomes. Not getting to the guys like Justin Herbert, too. It's like the, the, the very high-end payup options at quarterback, not as much exposure to them. Whereas last week, for instance... There was very few quarterbacks I had in my pool. It was like uh, Tua, it was Patrick Mahomes, it was Justin Herbert and like Kirk Cousins, maybe I want to say. And like those four was like most of what my quarterback pool was. A little more spread out this weekend, so a little bit more of a mix of stacks. Other wide receivers under the weight, uh, underway to here, uh, DeAndre Hopkins and who else? Marquise Brown, but a little flatter at wide receiver exposure than at running back. So let's see if there's anything else we could find as far as contrarian plays go. Who are some low-owned players we're getting to? Tyler Higby only projected for 7% ownership, getting to him in 27% of lineups. Matthew Stafford, Pat Fryermuth. So here's a couple spots that really look like good contrarian targets based on this. Rams passing game, getting to a lot of Nakua, Stafford, and Tyler Higby. Uh, Steelers passing game, talk about them. But then also... Uh, I think Anthony Richardson, he's looked like a really high upside quarterback and pairing him with Michael Pittman, who's only projected for 4.9% ownership, another good contrarian stack to get to this weekend. So that is a uh, little bit of a roundup of everything to look at for FanDuel. If you guys like this content, do me a favor, like the video, subscribe to the YouTube channel. If you want to sign up for our football package, use the link below in the description box. Get access to everything that I'm showing here on screen. I've really enjoyed using it, and it's also helped me be more profitable at football this year. So guys, good luck this weekend. Hope we all make some money in week four. See you back here next weekend for week five.